Hey, hey, Tony guys here popping in real quick. I don't have much time because Friday and I, I didn't get to shoot a video till late. You know, my boys, my son's home and my youngest boy, he playing his game on his phone that he liked me to watch him play. And then my oldest boy, you know, he playing his game on the Xbox or whatever. Now, yeah, yeah. If you were wondering, that's the Super Bowl helmet up there. Super Bowl helmet. Autographed by Tom Brady. Make me an offer. Make me an offer. You might have to go into your 401k now, but autograph authentic. Got the authenticity paper for it and everything. Yes, sir. Make me an offer. But you know, I want to talk to you about something about because I I, I see this a lot and I'm, I'm I'm dealing with it. I'm in the middle of it sometimes because my sister has three kids. And one of the things that I hear a lot of men, you know, talk about this and just kind of wanting to be there for their kids or and a lot of men leave their kids when they leave the woman or when the woman leaves them and I just want men to understand that your children are everything because they did not ask to come into the world but you as a grown man you chose to lie down with a woman to bring them into the world and here's the thing, you may literally hate her, the woman you slept with. You may hate her. And I've had men tell me that that I they say I hate the mother of my child. And a lot of times you got to get to the root of that as a man and ask yourself why? Like were you amazing to her and faithful to her and loving her and treating her like a queen and she just was this horrible person? Or did you cheat on her? Did you beat on her? Did you curse her out? Did you lie to her, mistreat her, deceive her, take advantage of her? And then she became a savage of a woman in defense of herself. Like as a man, when your head, when your head hits the pillow, you just got to get to the root of it yourself. Not taking sides or anything like that. You got to evaluate what you did and you got to talk to yourself and see what you did versus just putting everything on her because you have to get over what you have against her for the sake of your child and and i have to talk to men about that and say listen forget the woman and how ignorant she may be how rude she may be how nasty she may be and your only conversation is can i see my child and if the woman is using the child as a pawn, you know, because she wants money, then you got to fight the good fight. I got a friend now going to court, going back and forth to court, you know, and he's like, I'm going to get my son and, you know, I'm going to be get some visitation rights to see my child because I want to be in my son's life. And that's what you got to do. Like, OK, if she want to be immature or if you slept with an immature woman, and she was always a savage or she was always, you know, loose booty and or crazy or what have you. Listen, you chose to bring the child in the world. It's about you and that child. And this is the thing. What every man has to understand is you need receipts. You need receipts because that child, when that child grows up, that child is looking for the parents. Whichever parent wasn't there, that child looking for the parents. And most often it's the father that's not there because if the relationship breaks up, the court gives the woman custody or it's just kind of a given that the woman gets custody. In some situation, the man gets custody. I got another friend. He has custody of his son because he was more stable than the son's mom. But that's not the norm. It does happen, but not as much as the other way around. So in most cases, this man or this woman, when they turn 13, 18, 25, they're looking for their father. And, and if I had to be away from my kids, seeing what I see and knowing what I know, I would have me a shoebox of receipts, of court orders, court dates, every receipt of every diaper, pamper, child support check, every single thing I sent so that if the narrative was bad about me, in my child's household that I was a no good, sorry, this and that daddy, I got receipts. So my child see that I fought 
that I fought tooth and nail to be in their life because they are my responsibility because I chose to lie down and to conceive them with a woman and that it was not their fault that they didn't choose to be here. And although their mother could have been this, could have been that, then because that's always the guys, you know, I hear so many men. Oh, she this, she that, she that. I can't see my child because because of this, because of that. Listen, get your receipts in order. Get your receipt. Like, don't let a woman make you quit on your children. Don't let a woman make you quit on your children because you don't know who your child going to grow up to be. You don't know what your child could do. You, you don't know what role you could play in your child life. Like, I talk to grown men who they daddy barely talk to them. And their wisdom about life is the two conversations they had with their daddy. And I'm like, wow. You was with your mama every single day. And you quoting your dad from behind his prison bars. It showed me the power and the influence in a father, of a father. And it's like, we got to really understand that. And you got to understand that as important as mom is, just like there's no replacement for mom, there is no replacement for dad. And so it, it's both equal. You both play an equal role, but dad is going to feel some, some void, some things that a woman cannot feel and vice versa. But as a man, you got to feel the gaps you can feel. You got to make sure that you are showing up and that you're there. And that you're doing everything you can. And listen, it's hard with male ego. It's hard with male ego. And I had to talk to a man. I said, listen, whatever you got to do, if you got to work two jobs, you got to work another job. If all she wants is child support because she feel like you need to be 50-50 responsible, then work. Work so you could be in your child life. Like, don't quit your job or work under the table just because you don't want to pay child support. And then now because you're not paying child support, now she won't let you see your child because it's only hurting the child. Like as a grown man and grown woman, y'all got to stop fighting each other and hurting the child. Like, and this is what I tell, you know, women all the time. Like, listen, if he's not hurting, like if... Now, if he's going to be inconsistent in the sense of he going to call the child and say, hey, I'll be there at five and he don't show up. And then he do that two, three, four, five times in a row. Then, yeah, at that point, you got to become the barrier to where your child don't even know that your child not expecting it. And then if he show up and then, of course, the woman is like, well, hey, I got to have my schedule. I got my life. I ain't doing this. I ain't doing that. Uh oh. OK. Package coming in. That's it right there, baby. Huh? It got the name on it. What did it say? T R R O? Okay, yeah, yeah, that's it. Thank you. I'm glad you were still here. Oh, yeah, he wouldn't have left. I was just about to get up and go, but then I realized I got on these parachute shorts, so I'm like, that was. I got on these parachute shorts, big old shorts. Huh? No, I'm saying can't nobody see my shorts. They just see me talking about them. But if I would have got up, it would have been like, man, those shorts big. Night uh, two thousand? Huh? Right, right. <laughs> got on got on my big shorts, not my basketball shorts. All right, baby lady. Okay, go and watch the video. <laughs> okay, baby. Hold on now. <laughs> I lost I can't think if you right there. Is it my train of thought? You just you throwing off, you throwing me off. That's what I said. <laughs> okay, like back to what I was saying. What well, why standing out there? <sighs> she just said if he's not consistent, you gotta be the barrier. And so it's one thing, and what I always say is protect your child. Protect your child. And but at the same time, too, as a mom, for the moms watching this. You got to ask yourself, is my ego in the way? Is my heart in the way? Is my anger in the way? You know, oh, he over there with, with them kids. He taking care of that woman and her kids every single day. And then he want to show up once a month. 
And it's like, yes, that's not right. No, that's not right. But your child, for your child, your child will probably, if your child is happy with that once a month, then zero a month. That once a year, then zero a year. Because to the child, it's like, okay, I got mom. This is just a supplement. This is just icing on the cake. This is just when I see my daddy, I see my daddy. You know, I love my daddy. Now, the thing is, is that child will have more influence in the man's life than the woman. Because if the woman is not with the man, that means he done lost respect for her. He don't like her or he mad with her or he angry with her, or he won't pay back, he won't revenge, he resents her. And so that child, when he look in his, his, his baby eyes, and that, that child talking to him, hugging on him, loving him, that's going to hit his heart. And I done talked to grown men on the phone who boo-hoo crying, saying, I don't call my child because it break me down. I don't call my child because it break me down. You know, it tear me up. And, I'm, and I have to tell them, like, listen, as a man, and I'm talking to any man watching this in this situation, that's what you got to feel. That's what you got to feel. That's what you need to feel. Like, you need to hear your child's voice. If it's going to make you cry, then let that push you. Let that motivate you to be the best possible. And a lot of men, oh, I ain't finna be, you know, paying for their grocery that uh, for another man to eat it up. Listen, it ain't about who in there eating grocery. It's about this your child eating the groceries. I ain't finna get no nice car for her to be riding, letting another man drive it. Listen, you got the money, your child riding in the back seat. So if you got the money to, to get a nice car for the mother of your child, get the nicest car you can afford because your, chi that, your child is in the back seat and your child represents you. Oh, John got his child driving old beat up 1980 station wagon man the thing ain't got no hood caps on it it just you know how it sound like behind the car you getting shot this backfire hey, hey. that what john that what john's son get pulled up to the school in and and man he but he around here on a seven seven tray convertible don't with 28s on it but his child Riding in that car with, with, with his baby mama and they keep getting stopped on the side of the road. Man, I had helped them last week. So it's like you got to look and you got to have some type of a sense of pride for your child to say, listen, I want my child to have the best that my child can have. Okay, bump this woman. You know, forget her. I don't like her. I'm mad with her. I don't respect her. She this, she that. Okay, all right. You got all them feelings. All right, how are you little feeling? But what about your child? Did your child push you into that bed? No. Did your child come and ask you, hey, knocking on your scrotum, hey, let me out of here. Hey, come on, man, let me out of here. Hey, man, go on, go on, skeet, son. Come on. No, you chose to chase a nut like a squirrel and had a child. So now as a man, you got to have some kahunas about you as a man and say, listen, forget about this woman and all that we going through and all the issues we got. I got to be there for my child. And it's like, okay, boom. I'm sending this here grocery money. I'm paying this here child support. I'm keeping my receipt. If she going to the mall and she shopping, instead of taking care and buying my child some new shoes, some what have you, then guess what? I'm paying the child support because she got me on it. And if I don't pay it, then I'm I'm losing my license or I'm getting arrested eventually. So I'm a, and I ain't finna be working on the table, getting paid little or nothing because I'm under the table. I'm going to work a legitimate job and I'm going to bite the bullet because I chose this woman. I chose this woman and I knew she was crazy if that's the case. Or you got to look at it as a man. If that's not the case, you got to look at it as a man and say, you know what? This woman is a good woman, but she love and respect herself. She's strong. She got standards. She stand her ground. And I got to realize as a man that I tried to mess over her, that I cheated on her, that I beat on her, that I lied to her, that I disrespected her. 
Slept with her sister. Slept with her friend. Slept with this girl over here. Like, she got every right to hate me. She got every right to be mad with me. See, as a man, you got to look yourself in the mirror and see, what do I need to see for me? And regardless of whether it's your fault, whether it's her fault, whether it's both of y'all fault, if you got a child to take care of, that's all you got to worry about. And then listen, this the thing. This the thing. Because words, words will hurt. Huh? Words will hurt. And you pay that child support, or if she don't have your own child support, you giving the equivalent amount of money. Don't give the money in cash. Don't give the money cash. Okay, you a dope boy. Okay, you a scammer. Okay, so take your cash, go to Am Scott, get your money order, get your money order, take her that money order. Why you giving me a money order? Now I got to go to the bank and cash it. Why you just can't give me cash? Listen, listen. I I do business. I'm a uh, hey. Yeah, I know I'm out here in these streets. Yeah, this and that. that. I'm still a business man. Okay, I do money order because I need my receipt. All right, I still got tax to file. Yeah, I know I'm scamming, but I file taxes as a lawnmower. File taxes as a barber. So I need my receipts. Okay, all right, hush. Thank you, bye. All right, bye. And so get your money order. Hand her that money order. Rip off that little end where you get your receipt. Keep your receipt. She go to the mall if, if you done slept with and you had a baby from a city girl and she going to the mall because her thing taught Spanish, Jamaican, Asian, Mexican, all of this. And she, you know, yellow bag, purple bag, Chanel bag, this and that. And or she flying to Columbia to get her a booty, get her some breasts, get her a tummy tuck. Okay, you got your receipts. When your child come 13, when your child 13, guess what? Your child not getting on the bus. Your child hopping in his home, boy, or her home, girl, car, coming to your house where they know you live. Where have you been? Why I ain't seeing you? That's what your daughter saying. You know what? I've been trying to reach you. Your mama won't let me talk to you. She won't let me call you. She won't let me reach you. Your child will come search you out. And that's when you need your book of receipts. That's when you need as a father to be able to say, this is what I tried to do. This is what I tried to do. And listen, if you got a woman, who going to let you be in your child life, who want you to be in your child life, begging you to be in your child life. As a man, you have to be in your child life because you brought that child into the world. Your life will never be good if you ignore your responsibilities. Your life will never be good if you're not taking care of what you brought into the world. God can never pour out in your life because if you harm the children, you harming the children their emotional intelligence, their spiritual security, emotional security, financial security. If you're not being a man for your child, can't no blessings come your way. Everything you get is not a blessing. It's a snare. It's a setup for failure. It's a setup to leave you high and dry one day. It'll be snatched from up under you like a rug under a Latin because you not taking care of your child. The same thing goes with when you got a woman and you cheating on her and you not doing her right. You never going to realize your full potential. You never going to have pure and true happiness and peace when you taking the other human creations of God for granted and you not treating them right. You're not doing right by them. You're cursing yourself. The Bible says something about if somebody at home one of these children, it'll be better off time a millstone around their neck and diving into the deep of the ocean. It say something like that in there now. Nah. Read it, Google it now. Nah. Google it. Google it. The scripture come up. And the reason being is because God don't play by his kids. So this the thing. This the thing what I what I try to help co-parenting situation understand. And listen, go on my mentor.life. And then you click on find a coach. And then when that page come up, you're going to see a list of coaches. But at the top, it's going to be a little line and say, click here for filters. You click there and then you're going to look at all the different filters. One of them says subject or topic. You click that and you scroll down to co-parenting. Select co-parenting and then right up under the boxes, hit apply, apply filter. When you do that, all our co-parenting coaches going to come up. Hire the cheapest one. If that don't work, go to the next one, go to the next one, or whatever, hire the one who eyes don't lie to you. And talk through this here thing. And this is the thing. This is what this is why I try to help co-parenting situation understand. Listen, if you take as a man and you give money to the household 
of your child. Your child might not need clothes right then because she already bought clothes. Your child might not need shoes. So if she buy grocery, if she pay the light bill, if she pay the rent or the mortgage or pay the car note or buy gas or pay for tickets to the, to the NBA game or the NFL game, that's still all for your child. So don't worry about where the money going at. Now, she going to get, you know, Dr. Columbia to get, you know, her BBW or, or whatever that called, BBC or whatever y'all be calling that. If she going to get something like that right there, guess what? She got to answer to the man upstairs. God don't miss nothing. She finna fall on her face. And you know what? Her child going to grow up and the child going to see come see your shoebox of receipts and go spit it in mama face for taking the money and worrying about being a city girl then making sure the money that you was given was taking care of them and imagine how that woman gonna feel if she mishandling the money she got the answer to that so you can't take and deprive your child I ain't finna get no money cause she, gonna, she ain't gonna do right by it I might as well flush my money down the toilet. No, you flush your money down the toilet. You hand her cash money and you ain't got no receipt. But if you get her a money order, a check, you got a receipt. Now, you ain't flushing money down the toilet because that's going to mean something to your child at 16, at 18, at 25. Your child going to be in tears. Your child going to have you in tears. And y'all going to embrace. Y'all going to hug if she been the problem. But the thing about it is, it's a lot of moms that's not the problem. They trying, they they want, they want the man to come get these kids, see these kids. And as a man, you can't, you got it's your responsibility too. Y'all really 50-50. Even though when I'm talking to one person and talking to the other person, I tell each person, you a hundred. You can't count 50-50. You 100, your child parent, everything on you. But when you look at it from the other angle, when y'all working together, you really, you 50-50. So as a man, listen, you can't say, oh, I can't get I can't get them this weekend because I'm going to the car show. Well, she got a life too. If she had the child last weekend and she wants you to see your child and she okay with you seeing your child, as a man, you got to sacrifice too. So if she giving up date night, with her new man, you got to give up your date night with your new woman. If you don't want your child around a new man, you can't be taking your child around a new woman. It's like, as a man, you have to sacrifice the same way you want her to sacrifice. And then guess what? If she don't sacrifice, she got the answer to that. Answer to God, and eventually you're going to have to answer to that child. When that child become of age and can read between the lines. If you don't sacrifice... If you don't take responsibility, then you as a man will have to answer to God and you're going to have to answer to that child. So listen, as a man, bite the bullet. She cuss you out, I'll be that. I'll be that. You know what? I'm so sorry. I apologize for cheating on you. I apologize. I know I'm stupid. I know I'm no good. I know you right. 100% I'm that. I'm all of that. And I'm working on, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I couldn't love you. Whatever she want to call you, be that to be in your child life. Whatever she need from you, be that to be in your child life. If she manipulating and she mishandling the situation, she going to pay a price for that. But at the end of the day, when you stand before God, you could show your receipts. He already seen it anyway. I did everything. I, could. I, I bit my tongue. I bit the bullet. I was the bigger man. I stopped worrying about who was long stroking her. I stopped worrying about who was eating the groceries. I stopped worrying about who was driving the car. And I just focused on being there for my child and being a father to my child and, and bringing good energy around my child and having and being emotionally intelligent around my child, not smoking around my child, not drinking around my child, not cursing around my child, taking my child to do the thing that he or she wanted to do and I made it all about them. I put women to the back burner. If my new girlfriend or my new wife didn't like my child, then she gonna get told by herself 
and I'm kick and I kick her to the curb if she can't accept my child because she shouldn't have been with me if she can't accept my child and love my child just the way she loved our children that we have together or just the way she loved her children that she had from another man. If she can't accept my child just like it's hers, then she don't need to be with me. That ain't a woman for me. That's what you need to be able to say when you stand before your child, when you stand before God. We got too many fathers that's checking out and that's giving up because they don't like the woman that they had a child with and it's hurting the child he ain't really hurting the woman yeah she mad she angry yeah hurt a little bit but she can go out here and she can get us some dang lane it's hurting the child it's the child that's hurting and that's what you got to understand as a man like i, I remember telling my mama this is god's heaven truth I was living in sin. I was in the street selling drugs. I was hustling, sun up, sun down. 21 hours out of the 24 hours a day, I was out there trying to make me a sale. You hear me? And then I got back with my wife, she was my girlfriend. We had dated for two or three months. She cut, she kicked me to the curb. Six months later, we got back together. I was in the streets when we got back together. It was a little bit, she let me stay out there. A month or two, I can't remember. Could have been three, I don't know. And then she, she told me, hey, you got to get these streets up because she got pregnant. When she got pregnant, she got pregnant, I think, in September. The baby, he, or, or it could, yeah, it was like September because his due date was July 4th. So December 25th, I proposed to her. So she had been pregnant three months. March 30th, I married her. She had been pregnant six months. My son came April 26th. So... 21 days, what was it? I mean, 26 days, March, April. The March got 31 days. So 26, 27 days later, my son came. And I married my wife. Was I ready to be married at 23 years old? No, I wasn't ready to be married. Was I in love? No, I wasn't in love. You know what I had to do? I had to bite the bullet because I knew love was gonna continue to be built. I knew I had a guard up. I knew I was a savage. I knew I was a goon. I knew I wasn't no, you know, fall in love type of guy at that time, but I knew I wanted to be a father in the home with my child. Now I had an unfair advantage because the reason why I had the desire so strong is because my father was in the house. My father was in the house. So guess what? If you're not in the house with your child, at least give your child an unfair advantage by being in your child life so that your child at least grows up and have a desire to be in their child life. That's that's what you could. But if you're not in your child life, then your child going to grow up and have children and not care about being in their child life because they're going to say, well, I grew up fine. I don't need to be there. I don't need to be no good parent because my daddy wasn't there. And I grew up fine. No, they grew up messed up, grew up tore up from the floor up, broke, busted, and disgusted, looking like who shot John and forgot to kill him. And so as a man, you got to accept responsibility for what you brought into the world. And you can't let nothing come. You can't let the government stop you. You got to pay child support, pay child support. You laid down. You whipped it out. You went all the way. You did not wear a condom. It is on you. As a man, you got to be about that. So I remember telling my mama, I said, mama, and this was before anything happened, you know, pregnant or whatever. I said, mama, I said, uh, I said, if I get a prostitute pregnant, I'm going to marry her because I'm going to be there for my child. I'm going to be in my child life because that's the one thing that don't have no say so. And a woman, and a woman lay down with me. She a grown woman. She made a decision to lay down with me. She, If she know I'm in these streets hustling, if she know I'm a savage, if she know I'm like this right here, she made a choice. But the one person ain't make no choice is that child. I got to be there for my child. And not only do I got to be there for my child, I got to love that woman and treat her like a queen so my child could see love, so my child could see peace and happiness and healthiness, so my child could see that. If you're not with your woman, then at least your child need to see healthy co-parenting. Your child, If your child watching you curse they mama out, come on now, come on now, really? That what you gonna do? So you gonna let your broken home, 
your tore up situation coming from the slums, coming from nothing, coming from whatever you come from, you're going to let that trickle down. You're going to keep that generational curse going and you're going to pass that generational curse down to your child by letting your child see you be unfit, see you be irresponsible, see you curse their mama out, see you ignore them and cut them off because you don't like their mama after you chose to lay down and have unprotected sex with their mom. So you're going to let your child feel like an outcast, feel lost, feel abandoned, feel hated. Like women come to me and tell me about their child coming in their room in the middle of the night and saying, why does my daddy hate me? Why don't my daddy love me? And then you sitting over there with your other girl, with your new girlfriend, feeling sorry for yourself. When your child feeling like you hate them, your child suicidal, your child ready to go sleep around, ready to go tote guns, ready to go kill people because you don't want to show up for reasons that have nothing to do with the child, have something to do with the government, the white man, the yellow man, Uncle Sam, or the woman that you chose to sleep with and your child suffering. Your child is suffering. Come on now. We got to do better. Do everything you can in your power to be there for your child. Hey, this is Tony Gaskin. God bless you. We'll talk soon.